Hello class, welcome back to another section of our intensive calculus course. In this class, you're going to treat continuity. We've done so many topics in our previous videos, and if this is your first time visiting this channel, kindly subscribe. Then also like as well so that you get all my videos that we've done so far. Kindly watch this video to the end so that you understand every part of this video. When you say continuity as the name denotes, it means there is no breakage. Graphically, if I draw any graph like this and I give a curve like this, this curve is said to be continuous because when I start from here, I'm not going to take the pen off, but I rather take true. That's what we call a continuous function. A function which does not have any breakages so if you start put your pen here you shouldn't take your pen till you reach the end that is a continuous function now in continuity and limits we say that a function is said to be continuous if when I find the limit of f of x which is the function at s approaches x naught it should be the same as the functional value of x naught meaning if I put S0 inside the limit or inside the function, the value I will get should be the same as find the limit as S approach that S0. That is the only condition for continuity. Let's move to another part called, but we have a properties of continuity here. If you have any two functions, f of x and f of g, if both f and g are continuous then f plus or minus g will also be continuous f over g will also be continuous f g will be continuous then k which is a constant multiplied by any of the function will still be continuous now let's go to this continuity this continuity and at this continuity we look at removable discontinuity when you say something discontinuous meaning once you start you have to take your hand off somewhere so if i draw a graph like this and i give this and i put this i put this yes so when i start to realize that i'll move smoothly but upon reaching here there's a hole here then i'll continue meaning this is what we call the removable discontinuity the condition for removable discontinuity is that the limits at the limit of the function where x approaches x naught will not be equal to so the limit of function f of x as s approaches x naught will not be equal to f of x naught that is the meaning of removable discontinuity let's go to jump discontinuity jump discontinuity let me draw it somewhere here this is where you have something like this then you have another part here so that the two parts of the function are infinitely apart so that you have to jump from one before you go to the other that is jump discontinuity in jump discontinuity we are saying that the limits of f of x as it approaches the right side will not be equal to the left side because i have this separate i have this separate therefore if i take the limits of f of x as s approaches x naught from the right side it wouldn't be the same as limits of f of x as s approaches x naught from the left side that is jump discontinuity now let's go to infinite discontinuity infinite discontinuity sorry jump discontinuity is going to be this way so that's the graph yes it should be this way infinite discontinuity is rather this a discontinuity in which you are going to get infinity the graph doesn't end the graph doesn't end so that one, when you take the limit as s approaches infinity, as s approaches any x naught, you are going to get infinity. So limit of f of x as s approaches x naught, whether plus or minus, will give us positive or negative infinity. That will call infinite discontinuity. Let's solve some examples here so you understand how to apply the concept of continuity and discontinuity as well as limit of the function so our first example is h of x is equal to i have open 
This is a piecewise function, s squared minus x minus 2, all over x minus 2, valid over this part where s is not equal to 2. Then I have 1 where x is equal to 2 at s is equal to 2. Now what the question is saying is I am to find the continuity of this function at s equals 2. Is this function continuous at s equals 2? How will I know? What you are going to do is first find the limit of this function as s approaches 2. Then after you will find the functional value where at s equals 2. That is you put 2 inside the function. If they are equal then you conclude that the function is continuous at s equals 2. If not, the function is discontinuous. So let's see. If I find the limits of this function each of x as s approaches 2, what am I going to get? So, at s equals 2, if I find the limits, I'm going to take this part. So I'm going to get s squared minus x minus 2 all over x minus 2. This is a function, so if I put 2 because of this, I'm going to get indeterminate. For that reason, I have to simplify this expression first before I move ahead. Now, if I have x squared minus x minus 2, I can factorize this out because the factors of negative 2 that when you add, you get this, is negative 2 and positive 1. That is x minus 2, x plus 1 all over x minus 2 and at this point my x minus 2 cancel this and i'll be left with x plus 1 therefore i'm going to get my limit to be equal to 2 plus 1 which is equal to 3 now i have my limit to be 3 now let me the functional value the functional value is f of 2 f of 2 from our function is equal to 1 that is at s equals 2 is 1 so f of 2 is 1 and it's not the same as the limit value 3 therefore the function is discontinuous at 2. Function is discontinuous at 2. Then let's see our second example. I have g of x. This equal to 1 plus x squared 4 minus x. x less than 1. x greater than or equal to 1. So if I have this, I'm finding the continuity at s is equal to 1. As I said earlier on, you find your limit as s approaches 1. Now this is a piecewise function. So for that reason, this range, this range, I'm going to find the limit as s approaches 1 from the positive side of g of s. From the positive side, that will give me this part. Because s is greater than 1. That is the right side. So I'll take 4 minus x. Then after, where I see it, I put 1. So 4 minus 1. And that is giving me 3. When I take the other parts, I'm getting limit as s approaches 1 from the left side. And that is giving me 1 plus x squared. Then wherever I see x, I'm going to put 1 there. So that I'll get 1 plus 1. That is giving me 2. So let's see. The limit itself doesn't exist because 3, limit on the right is 3, limit on the left is 2. Therefore, the limit doesn't exist. Now, what is the functional value? The functional value f of 1 will be this part because this is where s is equal to 1. With 4 minus 1, which is 3. But since the limit itself doesn't exist, this function is discontinuous. This continuous at one. This is the end of our class on continuity. Thanks for joining the class. Kindly subscribe, share, and also join our future classes. Thank you.